For those who don't know, know me, my name is Jen Gillot. I'm the project manager for MRMS as it um, continues its full transition um, from research to operations here in the Weather Service. Um, I should have also gave Ken Howard and his team at NSSL a shout out on this page. Um, they are obviously the, the brains behind the MRMS project. Um, okay, so getting into just what we're going to talk about, we'll obviously talk about what MRMS is, what it does, um, a little bit about the operational implementation uh, here in the Weather Service and the whole R2O process. Um, we'll talk about how the MRMS data is being disseminated to users some of the current products that are being produced, um, current activities and future activities for the project, obviously who the users are, how they're using the data, and then we'll, we'll sum things up. All right, so um, what is MRMS? It's basically a radar processing system integrating uh, radar data, surface observations, numerical weather prediction model data, uh, satellite, all to generate a national 3D radar mosaic. Um, it also generates storm attribute data and products, uh, flash flood products, uh, QP products, all at very high spatial and temporal resolution. Um, so what I have up on the sort of upper right-hand side of the screen, there's really three main product area or bins for MRMS products. Um, you have your MRMS Severe, um, some products in there. You have uh, lightning density, rotation tracks, max expected hail size, et cetera. Um, you also have an MRMS aviation product area, obviously um, more used towards the, the aviation community. And then you have your hydro, your MRMS hydro, which is, has your QP products as well as your flash flood products. All right, so this next slide says a lot of the same stuff, just sort of more in a graphical representation. Um, on the left-hand side, you have all of your input data, again, your radar data, satellite model data, um, all going in to produce products, and obviously all of those products are to support um, situational awareness for forecasters, now casting, um, short-term forecasting of severe weather and flash flooding events. And these products are over um, the CONUS as well as most recently over some, some of the O-CONUS domains. So we'll actually talk about some a little bit more of those details in this slide. So the current domain, again, uh, we have MRMS available over the CONUS. Um, in the most recent implementation, we also have it available over uh, Alaska, Hawaii, Guam, and Puerto Rico. Again, like I mentioned before, high spatial and temporal resolution. We have about a kilometer by kilometer grid spacing, and most of the products are updating every two minutes. Um, again, some of the data sources listed there, your radar data, uh, rain gauge data, your model data as well. Um, <clears throat> so system locations, uh, obviously the original system and your, your research and development system is located out at NSSL in Norman, Oklahoma. Um, we also have a system located at the FAA Tech Center in Atlantic City. Um, this obviously is there to support uh, aviation applications and the aviation uh, weather community. And then most recently, we have the operational version of MRMS, which was implemented at NSF Central Operations on the Integrated Dissemination uh, Program, or IDP, platform back in September of 2014. All right, so the next couple of slides just sort of gives you um, an idea, of very simplified idea of how MRS, MRMS works, just taking individual radars and creating basically a national mosaic. So being able to really see the large scale picture um, for forecasters, again, for situational awareness, for severe weather forecasting, and flash flood forecasting. All right, so kind of stepping back a little bit, talking about uh, MRMS and, and really where it came from. Um, MRMS was developed back in the late 90s out of NSSL, and it really started as a uh, weather research program to improve operational radar QP, uh, mostly in the western United States. Obviously, they don't have a whole lot of radar coverage in the western U.S., and not really a whole lot of observational coverage to begin with. So it's really how um, MRMS got its start. <clears throat> um, in the early 2000s, the first sort of smaller scale MRMS systems were implemented. Um, the first one was out of the Salt River Project out in Arizona. And then there was also a MRMS system that was implemented out in Taiwan in 2003. Uh, finally, in the mid-2000s, uh, uh, NSSL developed a CONUS-wide real-time MRMS system. 
And then uh, shortly after that, they began disseminating uh, research products, um, all of the severe weather products, the national mosaics, and the flashbook products out to uh, weather service end users, folks at the WFOs, national centers. Um, and then again, finally in 2014, MRMS became operational here at uh, Weather Service. <clears throat> so this just gives you, this next slide um, just gives you a little bit more detail of the road to implementation, again, going from research into operations. Um, again, for pre-2008, you had your, your general research and development out of NSSL. And finally, late in 2008, it really entered that, um, the NWS transition process. Um, and it was finally approved as an official uh, line office transition project uh, late 2010. Um, where it really started to get legs and um, get moving is when we finally received funding for the transition. And this was in 2013. Um, and this uh, was from the Sandy Supplemental. So we, we were able to get Sandy Supplemental money to support uh, the transition from research to operations. Um, so then once that happened, uh, late in 2014, 2013, uh, it entered the final development and uh, went through all the testing at NSEP and then again finally reached operational status in, in September of 2014. And I just have on the right-hand side of the screen there just a general picture of the uh, NOAA research and development funnel and really how things work. So again, obviously, you go from your general R&D um, and then as you, as you sort of go down, you, you really narrow your focus based on requirements and operational uh, mission needs uh, as you get to your operational system, which obviously for MRMS, it was implemented operationally on the, on the IDP system at MCO. All right. Um, so I wanted to put a couple bullets in here. MRMS was actually the first project to be implemented operationally on IDP. So I think there's actually um, a few uh, good points of how this particular implementation um, was so successful. Um, I think the first, first and foremost, really the most important thing was uh, the folks out of NSSL were able to work directly with um, the folks over at NSEP uh, during the operational implementation, including on-site training and interactions. And I think really the the face-to-face -face and one-on-one -on -one interaction between uh, the researchers and developers and then the folks that were implementing it operational was really, was really key to making this a seamless transition. Um, obviously, when you're working so far away in different time zone, I think it was really key to have them actually, the NSSL folks actually flew out here and stayed here for a few weeks at a time um, to make sure that everything was as seamless as possible. <clears throat> um, Secondly, NSSL has built and they continue to maintain a real-time MRMS processing system, um, their R&D system that's really, it's nearly identical to the system that, that NSEP employs. Um, and what this is able to do is it really provides that straightforward R2O integration platform, which has allowed for um, a fairly seamless transition and continues to allow for uh, seamless transitions when um, there's new upgrades that are going from, from NSSL uh, to the weather service. Um, and then lastly there, you know, developing, making sure that both sides develop a realistic transition and Im implementation plan. Obviously, they, they were able to um, have a pretty detailed schedule on figuring out who does what and following that schedule with a lot of rigor. Um, documentation was obviously big, making sure documentation was, was correct and up to date and everybody understood. Um, again, communication was key, and that sort of leads back to the first bullet. Um, and then obviously, you know, user stakeholder awareness and buy-in. Um, MRMS has been around for 10 plus years, and so users were obviously already using a lot of the products, and um, we're excited to finally see it implemented operationally. All right, so getting a little bit into the details of the um, operational implementation. Again, it transitioned into operations in September 2014. This was considered the initial operating capability. Um, that's version 10.0. And again, runs on the IDP infrastructure in College Park. Uh, consists of about 47 virtual machines. Um, the most recent version was updated back in December. And this was version uh, 10.5. And the, the big um, uh, scope of that particular implementation was the, the Ridge 2 requirements. So um, for folks that aren't familiar, 
Uh, Ridge 1 is actually what's uh, currently running as the National Radar Mosaic on the weather.gov page. Um, that was developed out of Southern Region. And Ridge 2 will replace Ridge 1. Um, I think the, the goal for that is by the end of this fiscal year. So an MRMS will now uh, be supplying the radar data to Ridge. Um, so that's something to look out for um, in the near future. Um, and then the last bullet there, obviously, it generates a lot of products. Um, with, a, with a refresh rate of every two minutes, there's a lot of data, up to 200 gigabytes a day. Um, and that sort of leads us into the next slide where we talk about data dissemination. Um, so the primary way that users can get the data now is over the LDM. Um, there is a subset of data available over the SBM, but obviously due to extreme bandwidth requirements, we can't unfortunately give uh, make, make all the products available over the SBM. So, I actually have a slide in the back up if anybody's interested in exactly what products are um, available over the SBN now. There's about 23 products, uh, 14 gigs a day. So again, it's a lot of data. Um, and that went live this past July. Um, and this past fall, it's uh, all of the data that's available over the SBN is, is finally available via AWIPS to all the WFOs. Um, there's also currently an a MRMS website uh, available from NSSL. And I think they're working now to have that ported over um, to NCO and have it be an operational website in a future version. And then lastly there, um, because of the sort of bandwidth requirements over the SBN, we are looking at the potential to use uh, the AWIPS data delivery as a potential distribution for the MRMS data. Um, AWIPS data delivery is just basically sort of a subscription service for that the field offices will be able to use. Um, and I believe uh, that'll be operational sometime next year. So that's something that we'll be looking into for the potential distribution of the product. <clears throat> OK, so uh, the next version of MRMS, version 11.0, uh, is scheduled to become operational this September. I just put a couple of the um, updates in there. Uh, the, uh, one of the things that will be available will be FLASH. Uh, FLASH is, stands for Flooded Locations and Simulated Hydrographs. Um, and those products will be available over the CONUS. Uh, the FLASH suite consists of um, Streamflow products, soil moisture, um, all using the QSEED MRMS uh, precip rates. Um, also, Auto Nowcaster will be available in this next version. Um, Auto Nowcaster is just uh, an intervention scheme. It's just a zero to one hour forecast. Um, that comes to us uh, from NDL, originally from NCAR. And then we'll have some additional uh, Ridge 2 requirements in this version as well, um, basically updated uh, polar product resolution, just updating some of the polar radar products to their native resolution. Um, version uh, 12.0 will is scheduled to be operational third quarter of next year. This will be um, sort of the uh, expansion to the full suite of all all MRMS products that are currently running at NSSL. So, including all the convective forecast products out to two hours, some additional severe and flash flood products. A uh, full suite of flash will be available in this version for CONUS as well as the OCONUS domain. Um, hope to have the, the operational MRMS uh, website uh, running by this version. Uh, there will be some additional dual pole products as well. Uh, fully redundant backup system, this actually refers to the IDP system. So right now IDP, like I said, is running out at College Park. Uh, they're working on their backup system out in Boulder, um, which I believe should be I believe should be operational sometime, up and running operationally sometime this year. So that should be that should be good to go by the time the last uh, version of MRMS is implemented. <coughs> All right. So some of the other uh, project activities that are ongoing right now with MRMS, um, adapting portions of the MRMS to actually run on the the GSI portion of the W cost, basically just to improve some of the model initialization. Um, MRMS is providing radar data to the rapid refresh in the HER. And um, NSSL will also be providing the 3D reflectivity grids, grids from MRMS um, for all the OCONUS domains in support of the expansion of the HER model. <coughs> all 
All right, and then um, another sort of upcoming uh, project is the Research Transition Acceleration Program, or RTAP. So RTAP uh, actually came down as a project uh, last fall. Um, it's a three-year opportunity that's funded out of, out of NOAA headquarters um, through from FY17 through FY19. Obviously, MRMS was selected for this. Obviously, it's still pending uh, appropriations at this point. Um, but I listed some of the things here that are actually part of the RTAP proposal and what it would include. Um, some of the key points of that are actually building out the full suite of MRMS products for all the OCONUS domains, so Alaska, Hawaii, Guam, and Puerto Rico. <clears throat> um, going uh, for the CONUS products, going from a kilometer to 500 meters, so increasing the spatial resolution there. Um, some expanded dual pole products. Um, obviously, GOZAR is being launched later this year, so um, working to um, include some uh, GOZAR-related products. And um, all of this uh, operational implementation is just uh, pending uh, approval to, to actually uh, come operational on the IDP system. All right, so I just provided a page here. This is just some of the a subset of the current MRMS products being produced. You have, again, your severe and aviation weather type products, your QP, um, and also some of the QC metric products that MRMS produces. Um, so again, you have um, your big ones, your 3D reflectivity mosaic, your composite reflectivity, um, storm rotation tracks. You have VIL. Um, for QP, you have surface preset type and rate. Uh, your radar QP there, you can see um, one, six, 24 hours, um, QP gauge comparisons, and then your, your QC uh, metric products. Um, again, like I mentioned earlier, uh, only a subset of the products are available over the SBN. Um, all of the products that MRMS currently produces that are being produced operationally are available over the, S of the LDM. Um, uh, for users that have access to that. Okay, this is just a page to just show who the uh, key stakeholders and collaborators are. Um, NSSL has obviously worked uh, very closely with many of these stakeholders over the past, you know, 10 or more years. Um, they worked pretty closely with um, a lot of the national centers, WFOs, RFPs to really ascertain um, what the needs are from a user perspective. Um, they've also collaborated pretty closely with um, NCAR, UCAR, um, as well as folks like uh, Lincoln Laboratories on um, some additional, some additional uh, products for MRMS. Um, again, like I mentioned, a lot of these products, since it's really been available for um, in some form for well over a decade, the weather and climate enterprise have been using these products for quite some time. Um, most of the national centers and now more recently the local WFOs are receiving the data, um, again using it for situational awareness, um, real-time uh, hazardous weather forecasting for severe weather, for flash flooding, as well as post-event um, data analysis as well. And then again, uh, the, the MRMS 3D products are also used to initialize uh, models such as the rapid refresh as well as the HER. All right, so last slide here. Um, uh, obviously, MRMS provides high resolution integrated radar uh, sensor data for multiple agencies, not only for the Weather Service. Um, FAA is also a big user of the data. Um, it'll continue to fully transition into operations over the next year, like I mentioned earlier. And the subset of project, uh, products are currently available over SBN, and all products are available over the local data manager. And all future updates and um, upgrades to MRMS uh, will, after version 12.0 will be dependent on uh, validation and uh, approval of MRMS requirements. And that's it.